everyone. Welcome to today's um, Emmy Actions Modified Movement class. We are just so thankful for you to join us this afternoon. Um, we have people from all over the world joining us, so we're just so thankful um, that you're able to be here and give us your time and energy today. Um, Emmy Action is just um, beyond uh, blessed to have partnered with Shannon at Nourish Therapeutic Yoga um, to provide this um, modified movement class. Um, it will be about 30 minutes of the class, and then um, the rest of the class will be about 30 minutes of uh, question and answer, so you can ask questions of Shannon um, so that she can um, really dive in and explain a little bit about her process and her work and things like that. So we just welcome you all, and um, Shannon, I will let you take over if you want to um, let us know a little bit more about today. Perfect. Thanks so much, Erin. And thanks to, um, just for the recording, I don't know if it's preferable for Emmy Action to pin it for me so that they only see the actual, or if they want to have it as a gallery, I'm not sure. Um, but I just want to, I'm Shannon, and welcome to our wonderful community. And whether this is your first class or you've been coming regularly as a Nourish Therapeutic Yoga member, I'm so glad you're here. And I'd like to thank Emmy Action for hosting this event because it's such a great opportunity for us to gather. And we're from all over the world and we get to connect in this special way. So if you are preferring to start seated, please do that. I just have two bed pillows right now. Um, you can start laying down with your head on one prop and your legs over another it can be a really nice way to start. And if you have something for Shavasana to cover yourself, that would be great too. Um, I'm just going to mute myself for a minute because my dog's barking and I don't want to be part of everything. Okay, so as I was saying, um, since there's such a range of symptom severity with us, I've tried my best to make this class as accessible as possible, but nobody knows their body better than you. So do what you need to do to pace and look after yourself and rest when you need to. So we're going to begin a class with some breath work. And then you have the option to either visualize movement or go into movement. And we'll conclude with a guided meditation. And I like to use these practices as a tool to calm the nervous system and turn on that relaxation response. So remember the goal is not to push yourself, is to meet your body where it's at with compassion. So I'm going to start class with a quote by Nira Wahid as an attention for all of us for today. And it goes like this. And I said to my body softly, I want to be your friend. And it took a long breath and replied, I've been waiting my whole life for this. So thinking of that and being a part of our practice today, you can start seated or laying down, whatever would provide you the most ease. And let's let go of getting ready. See if you can just take a minute here and check in with yourself. Maybe even close your eyes or soften the gaze. And feel your breath in your body how it moves, let go of getting ready or any to-dos and just come into this moment. Let's begin by taking a nice cleansing breath in through the nose and sighing it out through the mouth. <sighs> Take that breath two to three more times in your own time this really allows the body to settle, the mind to settle, to release any tensions.
And then just gently sway your body a little bit, maybe bring some movement into the neck and shoulders if that should feel good. Or rolling the wrists and ankles. We're just going to slowly prepare the body, getting it ready to have some movement or visualize your body moving. So we're do a breath practice here with sun breaths. Now the first option is a smaller option with the arms, rising them up, placing the hands together and gently gliding them back down. You can choose how big and wide you make this movement in your body. You can do this laying down. You don't need to be seated. And just guide your breath in as you reach the arms up, exhaling as you come back to center. Nice and easy within your own range of motion today, not hyperextending if you have EDS. And we'll have one more full breath here, in slowly through the nose, exhaling softly through the mouth. Nice, okay. So I'll invite everybody now to lay on their backs if they're not already there and have that pillow by you so you don't have to get up again. You may choose to have something under your head and neck or a blanket over you if you tend to be cool. And we're going to begin in constructive rest with our feet flat on the surface, knees bent, and just be a comfortable distance apart. And the hands can lay gently to the sides. And if it's comfortable, placing the palms up. And we'll begin by bringing some movements into our backs and spine, which is similar to a cat-cow. This is a somatic arch and flatten. So just if you're new to this, maybe tap your hips and kind of get familiar here with that area and your pelvis. And we're going to begin this movement by rolling the pelvis down. So the hips come down, the tailbone tips, and the low back arches. And then nice and easy, let's release that and come back to neutral. And now we'll take the movement the opposite way. So this time you're going to flatten the belly and the back into the surface beneath you. The tailbone may tilt up just ever so slightly. And then nice and easy, let the spine resume its natural curve and neutral position. Okay, so if you're coming along, let's breathe in, roll the pelvis down, low back arches. Exhale, release. Release, release. Pausing here before breathing in and flattening down the stomach muscles engage. And exhale, nice and easy release. So you can pause here for rest or glide this movement one more time in your own time. And moving slowly really gives your body a chance to connect to the movement with your brain. Nice and easy. And then when you've completed that, pausing here for a moment and either letting the legs go long for rest or draw the knees in towards you for a little bundle roll. You can place the hands on the backs of the thighs or on the shins. And it could be nice just to rock your body back and forth. Just making sure your breath is soft and smooth. 
Breathing in through the nose and as you exhale, letting the legs come back down and letting them come long now. We're gonna take up a little bit of room. So widening the legs, letting the feet fall out to the sides and maybe even stretching the arms out to the sides or overhead into a starfish position. And sense and feel how your body's responding so far. Take a nice breath in and guide it to your belly. Okay. And if you're coming for movement, I'm going to show two options here. We're going to slide the feet back up so that the knees are bent. And if you are wanting to have a lower load version, it would be to have the leg long. We're gonna think of the left leg to start with. And if that left leg's long, you're just going to flex the foot back towards you and then point it away. So you're using the muscles all along your legs and getting some circulation there. The next version would be to take your knee and place your hands across the shin and then gently glide that knee towards your chest, but not all the way and let it come back. So whatever movement you've chosen for your body that feels good, some signs of over-efforting are, are you holding your breath? Are you gripping? These are cues that you need to come into a more relaxed posture so that you don't overdo. We'll finish one final round here and then let that leg come back down to rest when you're ready. Okay, so we're gonna transition to the right side and same rules apply here. That leg might be long and the foot flexing or drawing the knee in towards your chest. This side may feel different and if you're feeling any pulling on your low back, bend the opposite leg, it gives you a little more room. So nice and easy here. Is the breath soft? Is it smooth? And having one final round here before letting the leg come back long and allowing both legs to go long. Nicely done. So we'll pause here and ask the body if there's anything it's requiring, any movements at all it would like to make. And if you're joining me for more movement, we're going to come back to that constructive rest. And if it's available, having the arms out to the side in a T with the palms facing up. Now, if for any reason this is uncomfortable, you can have your arms more comfortable to the sides. We're going to come into a little bit of a twist. So beginning with the knees, gently dip them towards the left. You're not reaching for the floor, you're just gliding down. Nice and easy, draw everything back to center. And let's take that movement to the right now, gently dipping the knees, feeling a nice gentle stretch and twist, and drawing everything back to neutral, back to start. Okay, so if you're coming, let's guide the breath. Breathing in, dropping the knees to the left. Exhaling, coming to center. Inhaling, drawing the knees to the right. Exhaling, coming back to center. 
and either going long for rest or doing this movement one more time and see if your head and neck want to twist to the opposite side. As long as you don't have cervical issues, this is a, a deeper twist. So you decide what is the right twist for your body today. Nice and easy here. And when you come back through center, we'll use a little grounding moment here because we've done some twisting. It's always nice to ground by pressing the feet into the surface to the tiniest little bridge and release it all muscle engagement back down. Breathing in, pressing the feet down. You decide if you want to rise up a little inch or two, and then gently let your body float back down. Let all muscle engagement go. We're going to make our way now into our final posture by taking that pillow or prop that you have and placing it under the knees. And we're going to use this as a support as we come into our supported butterfly pose. So I'll walk you through a few options. You can begin by taking your feet, placing them on top of the pillow, walking them towards each other, and nice and slowly let the knees bloom open and the feet, uh, the soles of the feet come together. Adjust your pillow accordingly so that your legs are fully supported. Now, if you get here and you find you're gripping, this is a cue that you need to lower your legs away down from the body a bit. It doesn't need to be intense. We want to have this gentle release of the hip flexors and the groin. So play around to get that just right stimulus. You can separate the feet as another way to give you a little more ease. So play around to find that just right sweet spot. And then we'll come into our arms. So three suggestions here. One would be to place them on the belly if you're looking for comfort or grounding. Another is to place them away from the body with the palms facing up to get a little bit of stretch. And then the next variation would be to have the arms come to a T bend at the elbows and come into cactus arms or goalpost arms. And this really stretches across and opens your chest and underarms into the limbs. But again, the goal is not to be striving, is to have a relaxed opening so the body can sink in. Softening the jaw, softening the shoulders, and see if you can surrender your body here. And I'm going to make the offer of a breath practice you can do called Brahmahari breath or Bumblebee breath. And we do this breath by breathing in through the nose. And as you exhale through closed mouth, you hum it out. So it sounds like this. Mm -hmm. So take your time here. Mm -hmm. Settle into your breath of choice. 
If you choose this brahmarari breath, it engages the vagus mm -hmm. nerve with this vibration and allows your nervous system to come into the parasympathetic branch and relax and rest mode. We'll take two more full breath cycles here. And then nice and easy, let your legs come back long and rest them over that bottom prop. And we'll take a minute here to prepare ourselves for Shavasana, for our guided meditation. So you may decide to place something under your head, a blanket to cover you, an eye mask to block out the light, and See if you can relax back and have this guided meditation. Take a moment now to gently close your eyes and see if you can ease back into your support, making any adjustments you need to make yourself more comfortable. No, there is no right or wrong way to meditate. You can anchor yourself here by listening to the sound of my voice and let your thoughts come and go. Take a nice, slow, deep breath in through the nose, releasing it slowly and softly. And for a moment, simply notice the movements your breath makes. The gentle swell of your body on the inhale and the release on the exhale. On your next inhale, See if you can extend your exhale just a little longer, allowing your breath to carry away any tension you may be holding. There is nothing more you need to do. Just see if you can come into this moment knowing it is okay to take this time to look after yourself and give your body and mind the opportunity to relax and replenish itself. Now bring your attention to your head and face and see if you can soften your forehead, allowing it to be smooth. And continue that softness into your eyes, encouraging all the micro muscles around your eyes to relax. And following your awareness into your cheeks, all along your jaw, allowing these muscles to slacken and relax and soften down all the way down your neck. Relaxing, releasing, and 
just letting go right into your shoulders. Relaxing your arms, left and right. Relax your legs, left and right. Melting your whole body down into your support. Allow your whole body to be heavy, knowing you are safe and supported. Inhale, relax. Exhale, let go. Just let go. And allow your breath to remain soft and smooth. I will go quiet now, giving you the opportunity to replenish deeply. And I will guide you back when it's time to rejoin your day. And take a nice, slow, cleansing breath in through the nose, sailing it softly. And take a moment to sense and feel how you are feeling. And maybe even give yourself a thank you and gratitude for taking this time today to look after your body and your mind. And begin by removing your eye covering, keeping the eyes soft, and when you're ready to gently blink them open. And bring some movement into the fingers and the toes. And take a nice long stretch in any way your body may be craving. And either staying laying here or begin slowly rolling onto one side. You can decide to stay here, slowly making your way into a seated position. And we're going to close our practice in community together. I invite you just to take your hands and rub the palms together. Let's place them anywhere on the body that brings you comfort. And as we close our practice together in our community, may we wish each other light. May we wish each other love. May we wish each other peace. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining all of us. 
this concludes our movement practice and you are very welcome and encouraged to stay on if you can we understand if you have to go if you are staying on it is recommended to make sure you are supported not being in any discomfort This can be a really neat way to see all of us coming out of the shadows from all over the world and connecting and not feeling so isolated and alone with this illness. I like to think we're stronger together. <laughs> so we usually, I don't know if there's anything you wanted to say, Erin. Yeah, no, I just, you're just getting tons of, uh, tons of love and thanks in the chat, Shannon. Um, people are just saying, you know, once I'm, the first time they've taken a, a yoga or movement class in years um, and how wonderful and awesome they have enjoyed the class. So um, hopefully you have you have a chance to to see and also hopefully feel some of the the appreciation happening in the in the chat. So, um, yeah, if you are able to stay on for the next couple of minutes and if you have a question that you would like to ask uh, Shannon, if you want to put it in the chat type it in the chat and we will answer it. Yeah, feel free to ask any anything in particular that you may have about um, the movement we did today, a different way to be able to do it, or if there's questions about your own practice, or even just to say hi to the community. That's Feel free to come forward with that too. I don't so much know. right now. It's just all a bunch of uh, people saying thank you and sending hearts. And so I, yeah, if you don't have a question, that is perfectly okay. And I guess it just kind of get the ball rolling. Like, is this something that felt right for the community? Did they feel that their needs were met or it was a little too hard or a little too easy yeah. or just right? <laughs> we did get a question um, about, will this be a repeat of this session? And I will say it's a kind of a two-part answer. Um, this session is being recorded, um, so it will live on on Enemy Action's YouTube page. Um, and so you can do this session over again. Um, we will, as I said, we do add captions to this to make it accessible. So it does take about a week and a half for us to get it ready to be shared. Um, but once it's shared, it's up there um, for everyone to watch. We also have, this is our third time we've done this class offered something like this with Shannon. So we also have other courses and recordings that are on our site that you're able to watch as well. And um, moving forward, if you don't want to do this class again, we uh, will be working with Shannon um, three more times this year. Um, we're gonna try to be offering these courses once a quarter. So this is for our first quarter. So um, be on the lookout, You know, make sure to sign up if you're not on our newsletter or on social media, we will share about when the next class. So um, probably in about uh, three to four months again, we will be offering something like this. So yes. Everyone's just saying this was very affirming and wonderful and just right. Yeah, um, that's great. Someone is asking, um, Hannah is asking, is there a way to focus on the neck? Mm. Yes, we didn't really focus on it today, 
Um, maybe I'll do that in our next class together for Emmy Action is do some little neck movements that are pretty accessible um, as long, I guess I didn't focus on the neck because sometimes people have come with a lot of cervical issues or a lot of hypermobility. So we have to be cautious about that. But if you just want to have, and you're you're fine with moving your neck range of motion wise, some nice ones to do every day. This is my go-to is the gentle ear towards the shoulder, coming back to center, ear towards the opposite shoulder, coming back to center. You're not wanting to wrench. You want to feel like these muscles get a little stretch, but not this pull. Because if you overstretch them, they're going to grip and do the opposite effect of just releasing them. So you, it's a nice way to get a little range of motion and then dipping the, the chin down, coming back to center, and then dipping the chin up. So those are really good ways to get neck mobility, especially if you've been at the computer or cell phone too long. And then I have another question about, do you have any recommendation for headaches? Mm. Yeah, we get this a lot. Um, so headaches, it depends on what kind of headache. Is it is it a tension headache? Is it a muscle headache? Is it an inflammation headache? Because each one of those need a bit of a different response. If it's muscular, you can go into self-massage and releasing fascia. So using your hand to rub the neck and into the shoulders, into the temples, just all those areas around you or have someone do it for you and get them released. That's a really nice way if it's a muscular headache. If it's a different type of headache where it's the noise, the light, everything is bothering you. Having a cool cloth, laying it across the temples, having a cool cloth, Laying in front of the base of the skull and just sitting in a quiet room, dark, and guiding your breath um, might be a way to help ease that a bit and gently, gently making those little movements, not doing the big ones, but gliding it. Because when you glide it, it gives the opportunity to fascia to get released and move, but not in an aggressive way, much more subtler way. Hope that helped. Yeah. All right. We have another question. Is there a particular yoga move or movement that stimulates the, and I might mispronounce this because I've heard it pronounced or said a couple of it, but the vega nerve or any, oh, or do most uh, postures activate it anyways? It's, it's, yeah, it's one of those things. Yoga in general should help stimulate it. So whatever you're doing. The breath work we did with the humming, the idea, the thought behind it is the vibration helps to stimulate the vagus nerve and the vagus nerve you might have seen or heard about in these kind of holistic therapies. The reason it's focused on is it's a way to access the central nervous system to switch us into a more relaxed state. So, um, Vision movements, visual, using your eye muscles. There's a few videos I have in my library that are specifically for that. And the classes that we do, there's usually one or two of the practices we do to include that because it's such an important part. Wonderful. All right, just a general question um, about how to kind of make the lower back not so tight. Mm. <laughs> Hopefully you were here for the arch and flatten that we were doing, where we were rolling. That is so lovely. And doing it on the ground gives you more feedback for how tight your body actually is. So really coaxing that maybe a couple times today, depending on your spoon level and your ability spreading it out through the day but that is such a nice way to get better mobility in the low back that would be my go-to uh, if you want a higher load version a cat cow is also a nice way to get into that flexibility some gentle twists as well um, but anything that kind of rolls the spine 
slowly and softly, not big sudden movements or quick flow. Thank you. And then another question a little bit about the guided meditation. Someone asked that said, um, being guided is easier to do when you are, or it's easy to relax when you are guided. Um, should one be able to do that by themselves or is that just okay that it's easier someone else is helping you along? Oh, absolutely. However you get there, no matter what it is, is what's right. So for some, you know, they can't sit still for a moment to relax. So they have to move their body a little bit or go sit in a forest or something can be a way to kind of still the mind a little bit. But I myself actually need, find I need to be guided as well to get me focusing and paying attention and have those cues when to breathe in a certain way. I find it so helpful. And I find laying down is a, the best way, not the traditional seated erect spine. But for some, that might be how they meditate more effectively. So the, the answer is there's no right way to do it. I would encourage you to play and see where is your body relaxing the most? Where is your mind softening the most? And that's what you do. Yes. And I will say that Shannon has also provided us with some meditations that are also on our YouTube page. Um, so feel free to check those out as well. Um, and some of them are, were designed with the, the severe ME community. Um, in mind. So those are also there um, available. And also I think we're going to get some more meditations in the future from Shannon to share with you all. So um, yeah, our YouTube place is a, our YouTube channel is a great place um, to, um, to find us. And um, I just, someone asked about how do I find your YouTube channel? I think if you just, um, I know Holly's typing it, but um, <laughs> do you have a link for the YouTube channel? Um, yes. I think Holly, if you're on still, if you could post a link so if you go to any action dot um go to our website if you scroll down to the very very bottom we have a link to all of our social media accounts and you can see the youtube um icon and that is where it's located but if you just go to youtube um just generally um we are any action on the account and if you go there you'll be able to um find so let me see um there we go thank you holly for sharing it appreciate your support while we do these calls. Any other questions that anyone else have? Otherwise we can feel free to wrap it up. Okay, Aaron, I put a couple in Slack. I think maybe one of them didn't get asked, but I'm not positive. Okay. The, uh, yes, the knee arthritis one, someone just reminded us, I think might be the one that I put there that didn't get asked. Wonderful. Knee arthritis. Was it a specific question about knee arthritis or in general? Okay, gentle movements to help knee arthritis. So not being on your knees, um, if you're if you tend to do any yoga movements where it requires that and you still want to be able to do that, maybe um placing something under the knees is one thing in terms of arthritis in the knee there's not really a yoga movement i would say it's more not hyper extending when you're doing anything um where you're always keeping a soft bend in the knee so for any of the movements that you're doing not having your leg straight and if you need some support, um, you can put something under your knee uh, when you're laying down, like a pillow or a towel roll or something like that. So there's not the full leg extension. There's a little soft curve in that knee. That would help. And Shannon, we had one more that mm -hmm. said, I find deep breathing difficult on my back. Is there any way to make it easier to take in more breath in that position? I don't have any injuries to be aware of. Okay, that's good information to have. I'm wondering how deeply you're breathing. And I should say this because sometimes, just in case, for some, when I sit, 
you hear deep breaths, you go, and you do this huge swell. And, and really that is overextending the body, your lungs, and your nervous system. So when I'm thinking of a deep breath, I'm thinking of a breath where you can feel the belly kind of rising softly, even placing your hands there and guiding your breath there when you breathe in. It's a much different breath than just regular breath or gasping in for breath. If that still isn't comfortable, I would try laying on my side and not having the, the contact against the back and see if that feels any better. Maybe even in a, like a little curved position of comfort or even laying on your belly if that's accessible. And then your back is fully exposed and then it really has room to grow. But my, my, my instinct is you might've been breathing too deeply and too strongly. It's, Think of it as a slow inhalation, not large and bursting. Great. And, then, and I think the last one is going to be how to adapt yoga for hypermobility. That may be a really big one to try and address. Well, this is what we do here <laughs> because most of the movements, and I usually give the cue when it's not safe for hypermobility or EDS, but all the movements are small and slow. So you really have the chance to feel and watch where your body's going. Because I know a lot of yoga is big, huge movements and flowing and it, it's not ideal for hypermobility. We're not trying to be super stretchy, bendy, we're, we're just trying to have a safe range of motion. So focusing on the muscles as opposed to the joints in a movement, that will give your body the cue for when, okay, this is just right. And always do less than you think until it becomes a habit. Thank you. Mm. <laughs> I love the idea of doing less than you think. I think that is a lesson on many levels to learn. So just um, as we come to a, a close, I just so much um, appreciation and thankfulness in the chat, Shannon, just everyone says it was just really wonderful to come together and be a group. Um, so thank you so much for providing this for our um, for our community. We just really, really appreciate it. And for everyone who joined today, um, we just really thank you for making time to come and be a part of this. It is wonderful when we all can come together. So um, I, yes. So as we said, um, keep a lookout for more things come on our way with Shannon um, and Nourish uh, Therapeutic Yoga. Um, we will keep you guys all updated on things um, have been created for you all. So thank you so much. Have a wonderful afternoon and evening. Thanks guys. Hope to see you again.